look what happened yesterday. Our palm trees got a haircut. And I want to go back and just see the pictures from one of the last sunrise stroll and chat in the morning and the reason for we doing this is very simple uh, there are two issues with the dates ripening first of all these dates aren't very good and they draw the bats Second big reason besides drawing the bats, which bother some tourists and pilgrims, is they fall on the pathways. And it's inevitable with so many and so much traffic here with people that people step on them and they're very sticky. So they end up coming into Duke and Altum and the cleaning process is so difficult. So the best thing is just cut them early and then all those problems are eliminated. So today we have a very special set of readings. problems come your way, how do you deal with them? Maybe we could say the same thing about big successes. Sometimes we need to draw back a little bit and get a bigger picture. Oh, look who's here. Can you tell? difficult because the, the ground is sloping and they're lo lying lower than I am. the other side this morning so they must have realized I'm up here to greet you so what do you do with big problems when you're our big successes it's important to get the big picture to to draw back a little bit and see the whole thing in context and what we have today is an amazing perspective we have a nice view of the lake here, but if we were to go up on top of Mount Arbel, we'd see it all in a much more complete perspective. And even if we wanted to see uh, Mangla, we can see angles from different sides here, we'd have to walk around, but if we're above, we have a different perspective. And the perspective that our faith offers as Christians is very interesting, maybe those of you who are not uh, involved with our faith or who 
are neighbors of Christians and who wonder who are these crazy Christians. Today's feast offers a, a glimpse of understanding. about how we approach things, how we see things. And I just want to show you something else here right now. Yesterday when we were here, I, sh I, we, I discovered for the first time that we had the aloe vera, that it had survived, because it seemed to have been lost completely, but somebody kindly cut back this bougainvillea. And so we can see the aloe vera completely exposed here. And you know that aloe vera is a very, very uh, healthy, uh, it's a, a great source of health. It has extraordinary qualities uh, for healing for the immune system. It's amazing if we only knew all the secrets of nature in that regard, how many good things there are. sure also in all of these plants everywhere all the energy that's in a little stone if we were to do a nuclear fusion like I was dreaming about when I was a teenager so let's go back again to the perspective thing we have to go up higher to get the view. We have to go a little bit further back. And sometimes problems and difficulties or even successes suck us in, they, they draw us in so close that we don't have a good perspective. And look at the perspective we have today with the ascension into heaven. And in our faith, this is not a teaching, it's a historical, fact that after Jesus' death and burial, he rose from the dead. And actually already with that particular reality, today's feast is really also included. But for 40 days, Jesus continued appearing to the disciples so that they could acquire the conviction that death had not conquered him and that evil and hatred had not conquered him. And so the gift for humanity was, let's say, released, like a, le a record is released or a new source of energy is released or a roadway that's built is finally opened up to public use. Then now the fact of Jesus' resurrection was, was completely announced. And it was announced to those disciples who had known him, who had been with him all the time in the public life. And one of the apparitions was to 500 people. But basically after this, these apparitions no longer take place. You guys see something here? Behind the rocks? We got the catfish again here. There's a big catfish right there between those three rocks. Now you can see him for yourself.
see their their whisker, so to say. This guy's about a foot away from my toes. Come on, where did I get him? Oh, there he is. It's amazing. I have a temptation to pull down and grab his tail so you can see him closer. So let's get back to our perspective on problems in life and successes also. And the fact that human nature is now taken up to heaven forever. Just imagine the perspective this opens on life. The eternal word before becoming flesh didn't need to do this it was done for love of us for us and our salvation to reveal to us our calling that human nature is called to eternal glory forever and the sadness of the grave is not definitive the sadness of the grave is not definitive Death is not definitive. Human nature is called and gifted with life in glory. And this is the great teaching of the Ascension. It marks the end of the frequent appearances that Jesus made to his community of faithful followers. And there are little exceptions like the appearance to Paul, Saul, and then basically that's it, except then for other private apparitions that the church respects the accounts of those who give them to us, but they don't, uh, they're not required faith because we already have that through the teaching on the resurrection and the ascension in the New Testament. And this is amazing because we're not destined to lie among the rocks on the earth and just reintegrate into the dust of the earth. You are dust and unto dust you shall return. And this means all the big successes we have as well. We could always ask, what are big successes? And they all pale in light of this transformation for humanity. And that's really one of the major motors of Christian attitude. So if you have neighbors who are Christians, this is the big parameter of their lives. There's a, line, a couple of lines uh, also from Paul, who says, buy as if you're not buying. Have things as if you don't have them. Because the form of this world is passing. The form of this world is passing. We get very attached to some things, to some conditions. How long does it take for Olympic glory to pass? Tell me the names of 10 Olympic medalists from the last Olympics, and that's only recently. Tell me the name of five Olympic medalists from 20 odd years ago. The glory passes quickly in this world, but we're destined for eternal glory, body and soul. 
And this deeply affects our whole attitude to life. It puts other things in perspective. That teddy bear for the four-year-old was so important, and there's such civil wars in the kitchen over the teddy bear. But five or six years later, maybe not even that long, it's of zero interest. The little boy who was taking out all his nuclear weapons to defend his teddy bear is now completely relaxed when another child is playing with it because he has his moped or his bicycle or some other game. And that again is less interest. And then you see the big industrial magnets and they have huge real estate holdings. They control countries sometimes, they control economies, they control governments with their financial incentives and investments and maybe even bribes and they control. But that control, how long does it last? Beautiful teaching of archeology span for me is that, you know, it's passing, life is passing, kingdoms are passing. We have the stones from the Herodian period. We have a key here behind my back from the Maccabean, Hasmonean period, another one from the Roman period. And then actually there are 1700 years of archeology span behind those trees here in the Franciscan part of Magdala. So, and the perspective, the, the huge perspective is one of eternal glory, of eternal bliss. And a life here then is preparing for that. I'm not going to prepare, spend my whole life preparing a teddy bear. And even a meal, and a meal can be a great act of kindness and service. But this world is passing and we have a call to glory. And the Lord will come for us forever. God bless you people. Look up. Seek the things that are above.